Don't just eat healthy stuff, eat the fat loss stuff. So stop thinking about calories and stop thinking about I'm eating a healthy diet. I've actually never met anyone, I mean a few people, but I, I mean, I very rarely had someone come to my office and say, you know, I eat, Jay, I just eat your crap, you know. You know yeah, most of them say, I eat pretty good, I eat, I eat very healthy, right? I mean, they, you know, I, that's what I hear most of the time. So here's a couple hints if you want to write some things down. These hints right here will make a huge difference. In the morning, stop all cereals and go to protein-based foods. Protein shakes, eggs, that kind of stuff. A protein shake takes just as much time to whip up as a bowl of cereal. The other thing is, stop thinking about breakfast in terms of breakfast. We're all adults, right? We don't need to have, we don't need to eat French toast and pancakes for, for breakfast. I, you know, I do chicken breast and broccoli. If I, that's what I had last night, and it's sitting in there as a leftover, that's what I do, right? And that sounds strange to some people, but that is what we're talking about here. So cereals will get you in trouble. So here's the thing, Jade, I'm not going to give up my cereal. You don't have to, but realize what I told you. So have your cereal, but make sure you put some protein and fiber on top of that, right? Orange juice is not, it used to have fiber in it. Now it's just vitamins, sugar, and water. So if you instead say, let's take that cereal meal, that Kashi Goline Crunch meal, right? Let's make that better. I'm going to have my Kashi Goline because I love it. I'm never giving it up, Jay. Forget about it. I just love it. All right, so add two hard-boiled eggs and an apple to that. And guess what? You're going to start turning that into fat loss. Right? The other thing is salads, not sandwiches. As soon as you do a sandwich, that bread on a sandwich, I don't care if it's a wrap, if it looks, you know, if it's a spinach wrap or whatever it is, that bread gives you a bunch of starch and sugar, which sends the signal, you know, don't balance blood sugar. Be hungry in a couple hours. Have some cravings. So it's not that there, there's anything wrong with the, with, with the starch. You want a little bit of it. You know, you want enough to satisfy you, but you don't want it to overload the plate, right? So I always just say, go to salad. <coughs> and it doesn't matter where you go. This is the difference between choices and decisions with nutrition. I, I know what I get every time I go out. It's a chicken salad. And it doesn't matter where I go. If I go to Mexican, I'm getting a chicken salad. You know how I get it? I order fajita, tell them no tortillas, no chips, no rice or beans. That's my, that's my chicken salad, chicken fajita. If I find myself at Wendy's, and yes, I go to Wendy's on occasion, right? Don't tell anybody, but I do. What I'll do is get chicken, sandwich, extra lettuce, extra tomato, extra onion. I throw off the bun. I got my chicken salad. So it doesn't matter if I end up at the Cheesecake Factory, it doesn't matter where I end up, I've already made my choice about what I'm having, right? So salads, not sandwiches, is important. You do those two things and you throw in two snacks along the way, you're going to be in fat burning mode and you're not going to be overeating at night. Chips versus nuts. And this one's tough, right? Because some people have a trigger food with nuts. Some people can overdo that. Most people can eat. Nuts and they satisfy them. Almonds, cashews, peanuts, most people do really well with those versus chips. Why? Because of the fat and protein satisfies people with these, right? But what about jerkies and things like that? So if you're going to think about things uh, for snacks, think about protein bars, protein shakes, right? Fiber-based foods without a lot of sweet in them, like apples and things like that. Celery and peanut butter, handful of nuts and an apple, that kind of thing. And then really working to avoid the trigger foods. That's the difference between weight loss and fat loss. That's the big difference. So here's what it looks like, and I'll drive it home for you one more time. Golden Corral, okay? <laughs> I just want you to picture the Golden Corral meal and walk around, right? And watch what you get and watch what everyone else gets at a place like that. Pay attention to it next time you find yourself. What you're going to see is starch on top of starch, on top of potato, on top of macaroni, on top of white yeast rolls, on top of rice, on top of wraps. You're going to see all this white food, right? And then you're going to see a big piece of fatty meat, right? Fried chicken, big fatty steak, something like that. And then wedged between all that white stuff and all that fatty meat is going to be a few green beans. That's what we do. Instead, it should look like this. Broccoli on top of salad, on top of green beans, on top of cauliflower. 
a piece of lean steak, fish, chicken, and wedged between all that green stuff and that lean protein is a little sliver of starch white food. That's a big difference, and that's the difference between weight loss and fat loss. So you can take two ways. You can be, I'm going to eat as much as I want, eat all that green vegetables, eat a big piece of protein, have a little sliver of white food, or I'm going to have all that white food on a smaller plate. Right? And then I'm going to get home and eat a continuous meal because I was not satisfied. So eat more of the right things, high fiber, high water, high protein. Really eat preemptively, two to four hours. Never let yourself get hungry. And then there's certain things that you, you want to minimize, and not because they have some inherent evil quality. Carbohydrates are not evil. They give us energy. They're good for us. It's just that most of us are eating 80% carbohydrate. That's the reason why we should reduce them, because we are overdoing them to our detriment and we're not balancing them with the other things. So you don't want to go on a low-carbo, no-carbo diet. What you want to do is eat enough carbohydrates to satisfy you so you're not craving sweets, but not so much that you're you know, hungry all the time and want more of it. And that's different for everyone. We call that the carbohydrate tipping point. So that's why we talk about having bites. Start with bites. If you don't like thinking of bites, think in terms of you know, cups or a half cup here or there or something like that. But you don't want starch to be the center point of your meal. That's why cereals and sandwiches, if you really want to live the fat loss lifestyle, that's why cereals and sandwiches don't have a place. That's the reason why. And then one time, look, food is just, you know, food is fun. Love food. I come from a big Italian family. That's my father makes the most amazing Italian meals. <laughs> so I love food. Just like you guys, wine, all that stuff. So one time, you guys, you can't not enjoy life and, and enjoy food. I always say one to three reward meals depending on where you are on your goals a week. Where you eat as much of and whatever you like. But the rest of the time you have to you know, pay attention to these principles. And that really is kind of the, the, the breakdown of the fat loss lifestyle. So um, this, is, this is our book that's going to be released under a new title, which we're really excited about. Any of you guys who know the, whole, the book was released under the New Meat Diet. It's the same book, but we finally talked into changing it to the right title. Anyway, I'll take questions for anyone. That's really all I have, but I'll, I'm glad to answer as many questions if anyone has them about specific things related to this fat loss nutrition.